Lou, isn't this supposed to be Lou and Tech? Yes. So where's the Tech? I gave it away. Wait, what? I gave it away. You did what? Hey guys, welcome to my video, welcome to my channel. I'm really excited to have you here. Now, I just wanna first of all apologize for that crazy intro. I just wanted to have a little bit of fun. Maybe you liked it, maybe you didn't like it. But you know what, if you did or you didn't, it doesn't matter, because you're here now and that's all that matters. Well, I just wanna go ahead and confirm, this is still Lou in tech, I am still Lou, and I do still have some tech. Now, my main rig is under construction. I sold off my two graphics cards and my CPU because the new generation of AMD CPUs were coming out and the new graphics cards were coming out both from Nvidia and from AMD. So I wanted to sell them off while they were still worth something and that helped me pay for some of the parts in this mining rig. So without further ado, let's get straight into this and talk about the components that I got in here. Okay, so first and foremost, we're gonna be talking about the costs, how much money I spent to put this rig together. And in addition to the costs, how much money this rig is projected to make, how much it's making today, and what that'll look like in the future. In addition to that, we're gonna be talking about the hardware, my graphics card, risers, and any additional hardware I have. And in addition to the hardware, we're also gonna be talking about what software I use to flash my cards, or BIOS mod my graphics cards, to get that extra few mega hashes, and what software I use to actually mine Ethereum. And once we finished all of that, I'm gonna give you my honest opinion as to whether I believe should you go out and purchase a mining rig of your own or should you just take that money and invest that somewhere else? Without further ado, let's get straight into it. out each piece of hardware first so you guys have a good idea of how to build a rig yourself and why I went with the hardware that I went with. For the graphics cards I went with 9 AMD RX 5700 XT Sapphire Nitro cards. The reason I went with the Sapphire Nitro cards is they have a good hash rate, which is important. I believe that the Sapphire Nitro cards is the way to go because when you're mining with, you know, five, 10 or more cards, those electricity bills, they're gonna add up quite quickly. So you wanna make sure that um, you're pulling the least amount of wattage as you can. Now, if we move on to the motherboard, I went with the the Asus B250 Mining Expert. What's great about this board is it is a 19 slot motherboard. You can fit 19 graphics cards into that one board. Typically what I've seen, folks you know, tend to incrementally get more cards over time. 19 is gonna be a pretty high limit for you to you know, get up to. So that's why I went with that motherboard. So if we move on to the next part, I've got two PSUs, two power supplies. I've got a Thermaltake Tough Power 850 watts. I've also got an Asus ROG Thor 1200 watt PSU as well. I basically took both of them from my last two rigs. It gives me enough wattage to handle nine cards and I've got room to be able to handle quite a few more. If we move on to the processor, I've got an Intel Celeron 3930. I got that from looking at the recommendation from other GPU miners. Now for storage, I got a pretty cheap uh, Kingston SSD, it's 120 gigabyte. You don't need to go ham on, a, on an SSD. You just wanna have something that's got enough space that you can boot you know, and run your mining cards on. So that's why I went with that. I also use a 32 gigabyte USB to boot Hive OS on, which I'll be talking about more when I talk about software. And in addition to that, I've got two packs of six risers and they had everything that uh, you know typical riser set needs which is the insert for your GPU the USB 3 connector and also the card that slots into your motherboard I also have uh, 
Touch Aqua, BP, TA, Notos, 120mm, DRGB fans. And they're the fans I'm using at the top of my rig. Now I've got like a push-pull configuration where I'm pushing air and I'm then pushing it away outside of my window. Um, but these are the fans I use to push that air away. For my case, I am using the Kingwing Bitcoin Miner case which holds, they say eight GPUs, but I've actually got nine and I'm definitely gonna be upgrading to 10 or 11. Just for the actual listing sake, they say it holds eight GPUs and that is what I'm using for my case. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the costs for each of these parts and list them out. For the Sapphire Nitro cards, I was able to get nine of them at an average price of $420. Now, how I was able to get that price was a combination of buying used cards, buying refurbished cards, and buying new cards. And that came to $3,780. So moving on to the motherboard, I picked up the motherboard for 129 bucks. Okay, so let's move on to the RAM stick. I was able to get the 16 gigabytes of RAM free because I got that from my last rig. If we move on to the power supply units as well, my Thermaltake Tough Power 850 and my Asus ROG Thor 1200 watts. Again, both of those uh, PSUs I was able to get from my last machine. There's no additional money I had to pay for those. And so moving on, if we look at the Intel Celeron um, 3930 um, PSU, I got that for 80 bucks. My Kingston SSD, I picked that up for 20 bucks on Amazon. And then in terms of my USB, I got that free, actually at Micro Center when I was picking up um, some other stuff, they gave me a free 32 gigabyte uh, USB. In terms of the risers, I got two packs of six risers for $40 each. So that'd be two packs for 80 bucks. In terms of the fans with the crazy name that I can't pronounce, um, I was able to get those fans for $40. And then in terms of the PCIe splitters, which I use to not only power the graphics cards, but to power the risers, um, I was able to pick up two packs for 20 bucks. And then finally, in terms of the case, Kingwin Bitcoin Miner case, I picked that up on Amazon for 89 bucks. And that gives me a total of uh, $4,238, and that does include tax. So let's talk about the hash rate, which is uh, something I'm pretty excited to talk about and a really important part of your mining rig. With uh, these nine cards, these nine uh, Sapphire Nitro cards, I am able to get anywhere in the region of 496 mega hashes per second to 507 mega hashes per second mining on Ethereum using either Claymore Dual as the miner or Phoenix Miner. Now, I do find that when I use Phoenix Miner, I do get a slightly higher hash rate of around 510 mega hashes per second, but I do find that when I use Claymore Dual, it is a lot more stable than Phoenix Miner. Now, cooling also plays a very big part on the stability, and I think that if you can cool your cards sufficiently, you will be able to push them a little bit more and your miners will be more stable. In any event, I have my mining rig set up so that if there are any crashes, it boots straight back into uh, my miner. So that way, you know, crash, whatever, you go, you're gonna go straight back and mine. So yeah, that is my mega hash number, which I think is pretty strong. We are getting around 510 mega hashes per second. In addition to that, we're also getting uh, 900 watts being pulled from the nine graphics cards, which I think are pretty strong numbers. Let's talk about something fun. Let's talk about the profitability. Let's head over to watermine.com and check on the current rates. You simply pop in your values. In this case, we're gonna just put in the mega hash rate, which we're getting, 507 mega hashes per second. Also, you're gonna put in your wattage there. My wattage is 900. At this particular time of shoot in the video, the daily revenue for my nine cards equates to $17.68. The weekly revenue would be $123.76.
If we put that weekly into a monthly, that will translate to $536.29. And of course, we have to do the year. So that would be $6,435.52. That's just the revenue. What you have to take into account is the electricity costs as well. Now, I think this one's a little bit more tough to do. I've recently started mining, so I don't have an accurate value that I can give you. What you also need to take into account is that profitability goes up and it goes down by the day. It really depends on where Ethereum goes. And right now, the trend seems to be that it is increasing I just believe that you know things are on the rise personally you also have to take into account how long do you plan to mine ethereum so let's say you're mining for two years and maybe when ethereum goes to 2.0 maybe you decide to sell your graphics cards and let's say you didn't spend any money in your ethereum wallet if you then decide to sell your graphics cards which you can then place into your total earnings minus your electricity costs you know so there's there's some variables to it but um at least you can see what my daily rate is what my weekly rate is and what my monthly and yearly rate is at this particular price Okay, so let's talk about the software. This is a pretty important segment here. I do two things. The first thing I do is I use HiveOS as my primary mining platform. And then I use Windows to BIOS mod my graphics cards and to test them out, to make sure it's working, it's stable. I then disconnect that SSD and then I boot straight into HiveOS. You need to save it to a flash drive or to an SSD. HiveOS runs on a Linux um, environment and I find in my testing and in my opinion, it is a lot more stable than running your mining in a Windows environment. I'm able to configure it. I'm able to have it as a dedicated machine without other variables affecting it. I'm able to access HiveOS when I'm at work, when I'm on the go, and I just really, really like it. Now, I only have one rig at the moment. HiveOS doesn't charge me any fees. I believe that if you have over three or over four, I'm not too sure, um, then um, it'll charge you a small fee. So that works for me, that works really good. Um, you know, having HiveOS as my dedicated platform and I have my computer configured so that if there is a dropout, if you know, if it does crash or whatever, I have it booting straight, in, straight back into HiveOS. And so far that is working like a dream for me. I use Red BIOS Editor, more power tools, AMDB Flash, and with those tools, I am able to BIOS mod. There are some very good guides out there on how to BIOS mod. I actually use a guide from Red Panda Mining. I want to shout out to Red Panda Mining. I've gotten a lot of good information from him. Please check out the link to the tutorial, which I'm going to leave below. Um, it's quite simple once you've done it once or twice. It doesn't take too long. And the great thing about BIOS modding is you can get another, you know, four or five, six or eight mega hashes per second stable depending on your graphics card and depending on the silicon lottery that you're going to be going through with your graphics card that's the software i use i highly recommend hive os stability is fantastic running on that uh, linux platform so yeah i hope that helped and with that being said let's get into the last section which is my honest opinion should you get into gpu mining hey guys thank you for getting to the end of the video i really appreciate it the final thing that i want to finish with is my honest opinion on do i think you should get out there and spend maybe four thousand dollars of your money to get into gpu mining and start mining ethereum or any other coin i don't necessarily think the automatic answer is yes I don't think necessarily the automatic answer is no. If you are really considering getting into GPU mining, you have to love crypto, you have to know that this is not a get rich quick scheme, and you have to be willing to learn about it and be there for the long haul. Let's use $4,000, right, as a figure. You could go out and you could spend $4,000 buying Ethereum. Now, there would be some costs involved. Whoever it is you're buying Ethereum, you have to pay a little fee. Um, 
attached to that. Now it's fine, but what's the upside to it? Well, you won't have to have electricity costs. You won't have to configure it and check your rig and check any other variables that could be wrong. So why not just go out and just buy it and not have to worry about any of the variables associated with it? If you do love Ethereum and if you do love mining and you really like crypto, yes, there might be more work involved in the mining route of going around things there's the absolute reality and the absolute possibility that you'll make your money back your initial investment in under a year after a year you know your roi would be hit and you'll be grossly exceeding that it's not going to be the same as buying it and having those potential gains straight away but you'll be mining it over a period of time and guess what you don't stop after a year so overall my opinion is this if you really are interested in the space and you're really passionate about it i think there is still a case to get into it now if you are not going to be 100 percent dedicated to this I think you're much, much better off going out and actually buying Ethereum or buying another crypto coin. It will just suit your lifestyle better because there's a lot of work that's going to be involved. So depending on which side you fall into, that's going to, I guess, answer the question on whether you actually go out and purchase Ethereum as a coin or if you actually go out and start mining with GPUs. Thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this video helpful. I know that I had fun shooting this. Now, if you did like it, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel. I really want to grow this channel, so thank you for your support. Um, I'm going to be talking about my new rig soon. Um, it's going to be a water cool PC. In addition to that, we're also going to be adding cards to the mining rig. So there's a lot to come. Thank you guys again. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.